You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ed Astra. Um, I wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up. There's going to be a link in the description. Y'all just go ahead and uh, check it out if you want. We got three reward tiers with exclusive, with exclusive benefits and rewards. All of them include an access to our private community Discord server where you can hang out with me and strange AI program L, who's monitoring me as we speak. But yeah, anyway, y'all just go ahead and check that out. Membership start as little as $5. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Amicus chews for a while, then swallows. It's not like I'm always eating sweets. Virginia disallows me from doing so as well. I'm simply taking advantage of not being under supervision at the moment. Amicus, your consumption of sugars has exceeded your daily limit. A report for Virginia has been filed and we supplied to her upon our landing on Adastra. Amicus pauses then shrugs, pouring the rest of the bag into his mouth. Well, well, as long as you have the parental tech to keep you healthy. We do. Everything in my body is regulated to normal levels once a month. Wow, look at you. So I am technically free from any poor choice I make diet-wise. I am simply kept away from sweets to discipline my impulses. Well, that's clearly not working at all. Amicus smirks at me before opening another bag of what looks like candy. I glare at him, then poke him in the stomach, making him grunt. I think you're actually gaining a little more weight. The wolf clasps his stomach with a hard smack. This? It's part of my stature and is important for my center of gravity in combat. Oh, really? I move to sit in Amicus's lap, rubbing my face against his bulk. Yes. You see how handily I handle you and I when we wrestle? Besides, you like it. I rest my head against his chest, feeling the softness of his strong body swell around me with each breath he takes. You got me there. I listen to the candies clack around in his mouth, against his teeth and against each other. I've been savoring everything about him that I can, even just the sounds of him eating candy. We sit there in silence for a bit, becoming all too aware of the passage of time. Ooh, excuse me. I take a deep breath. So, will we be able to communicate at all over the next eight years? Amicus pauses, his mood lowering a bit, a bit to match mine. That's hard to say. I've wondered similar things, but I have not received an answer. I sigh deeply. Sometimes I hate the parents. Amicus laughs, a stark contrast to how he would have reacted to such a statement a year ago. They are frustrating, to say the least. I have a feeling that, I have a feeling that we will, though. Yeah? Yes, they work in very mysterious ways. I believe it is clear now that the Archive are not, are not only their method of communication. I think the two of us joining together in, say, a dream would not be out of the realm of possibility. The confidence I'd originally felt while leaving at Astra is fading away at this point. Instead, I feel that familiar feeling of dread and uncertainty take over my mind. I hug Amicus harder, pressing my face into his fur, inhaling the lavender scent. I mumble into his chest. I'm scared. Why's that? There's nothing left, there's nothing to be afraid of. Amicus hugs me tightly, nuzzling my hair. Even now, he's managing to hold it together somehow. That actually makes me feel a little, a little grateful. I don't know how I'd be able to do this if he was acting as unsure as I am, as I am right now. You know how, you know how big of a fuck-up I am? What if I do something wrong? Amicus chuckles. I feel that the parents would not would not attempt this unless they themselves were certain of success. Simply follow their guidance. I'm silent at that, and Amicus knows why. I know that what we experienced with Cato was terrible. They weren't able to see... They weren't able to see as clearly. I know that they are much more confident here. I don't know how I feel about being guided by gods that don't know what they're doing. Well, they're not gods, which is why they are prone to mistakes. But the time I've spent communicating with them over the past year has left me a bit more confident in their capabilities. I squeeze my eyes, letting the small amount of tears that had built up get soaked into the wolf's fur so he doesn't see what I see when I look up at him. Why's that? He smiles at me, placing a paw against my head and pushing it back down against my sh against his shoulder. Well, they have far more tools at their disposal than we do. I mean, they actually see the future in some ways. If I must trust anyone with my future, it would be the parents. I just don't want to mess up and not be able to see you again. Amicus's expression grows stern. That will not happen. I will make sure of it, no matter what the parents say. But do we even have a choice? Does it bother you that it feels like we don't have a say in anything? These are conversations we've had before, but for some reason I keep flip-flopping on whether or not I actually do have a choice here. We do. We just have the advantage of knowing the alternatives, and that this path is much more desirable. I'm reminded that while Amicus might be more open to criticizing the parents, he certainly still believes in their plan. I don't know if I feel the same quite yet. You saw our future? Amicus pauses, probably wondering if this is okay to share. He seems to make up his mind. Yes. It was beautiful. I just... 
I worry it's not really going to happen. I've only thought of it now, but what if they're leading us on? Click now, water time. Oh, goodness me, this... Oh, this water's delicious. Oh, my God. Cherry bubbly. Amicus grunts in surprise, clearly not having thought of that himself. They, they wouldn't do that, but I suppose there is some degree, some degree of trust that goes into this, yeah? We're here because of them. All of us are. I have to trust that. I sigh deeply. I just wish we could run away to some other peaceful planet or something. But I know we wouldn't be together unless we were meant to do this, so I guess that's partly why I'm going along with it. You know, judging by the vision, I think we'll come to believe in our mission over time. I hope so. How about y'all compare visions? See if they match up. Amicus slowly pulls me back to lie down with him, both of us lying on our sides as he spoons me. I try to think of something to say, anything really. Time is truly running out now, but, it's, but I still come up short. Instead, I lie back against Amicus amongst as many silver wrappers of food, listening to him suck on his candies. It's comfortable. For a moment, I let go of my worries, and the tiredness of the night before, before catches up to me. Exiting the stretch drive. Prepare for arrival in 20 minutes. I come, to, I come to with a sudden jolt, Amicus jumping behind me as well. I sit up, rubbing my eyes. Wait, already? Amicus sits up next to me, a paw on my back. Are you alright? Damn it, Amicus, we were supposed to stay up! There's a sinking feeling in my chest as I realize we've slept away most of the time we had to travel. Why'd you let me fall asleep? I look at him accusingly, even as my eyes start to blur with tears. Sorry, we were both so tired. You seemed at peace and I didn't... Ah! I throw off the blanket that Amicus had pulled over us and step out of the bed, turning away in case I break down like a little kid. Killian! Act like I don't hear him, moving to the cockpit area to look out the windows. Sure enough, we're no longer in the stretch, instead drifting toward a familiar globe in the distance. Approaching Earth. We will arrive at Killian's residence in Rome, Italy. Heavy paw rests on my back. Killian! We're out of time! A lump in my throat. The lump in my throat makes it hard to talk. Slowly, Amicus hugs me. Killian, we did have time. Several months, in fact. A few hours on a ship is no time lost. Any time is time lost at this point. Amicus doesn't say anything. And I lean my head back against him, swallowing down my bitter attitude because I'm not about to let it ruin our last moments together. Sorry, I'm just... I'm not ready. I'll be able to come into your apartment. We do still have a bit of time left, you know. I nod quietly, allowing Amicus to hold me for a bit until we have to get back into our seats for re-entry. I feel slightly queasy as we approach Earth at an unreal speed. I quickly spot Europe. The brilliant sprawl of light spanning the continent as a whole as a whole are far more intense than any city on Adastra. Italy's characteristic, boot-like shape stands out from the darkness of the seas that surround it. I focus on the glittering patch that I know is Rome, and within seconds we're descending into it. Won't everyone see us? We're cloaked. I trust what the wolf says, even though I haven't noticed any difference. We continue to descend at a rapid pace, and as we approach a block of apartments, I grip onto the seat in anticipation of a hard landing, but our sudden yet gradual halt is gentle. We come to a rest on the roof of my residence. You landed on the roof? Indeed, there was no room elsewhere. Amicus opens the door and jumps out, and again I'm worried about being seen. But when he helps me out, I realize how dark it is. Stretch schedule indicates liftoff should commence in 15 minutes. Another twist in my chest as we're, th as we're, as we're down to literally minutes. Amicus leads the way to a fire escape, and I'm struck by how strange it is f seeing my wolf frammed by this human world. The sights of Rome, the sounds of distant traffic... It almost makes me dizzy with how familiar it is, despite having been away for so long. Amicus stops at a balcony, and I trust that it's, that it's the one to my apartment as he boldly slides open the door, apparently aware that the landlord never seems to keep it locked. I step inside, and through the darkness I can see that my personal belongings are gone, obviously. It's cleaned out and looks just about, and just about the same as when I first got there. It's empty, luckily, and I wonder if anyone has stayed here since I went missing. Probably not if there was an investigation. I swallow hard, remembering how much media coverage and documentaries there were about the two Canadian and British students that went missing here a few years ago. Second y'all, water time. Mm. And the coverage of an Australian student who disappeared a week before I arrived. I hope I didn't get the same treatment while I was away, but I get the feeling that I must have. I shake my head, once again wondering where to even begin. I turn around, seeing Amicus standing there, and immediately I get a painful, stabbing feeling between my throat and chest. 
His pose and demeanor, it's finally reflecting that our time together is coming to an end. We both stand a few feet apart, unsure of what to say. Well? Yeah. I suppose we should begin our farewells. Yeah, until next time at least. Yes, it will only be a moment in the overall time we will have together. Yeah, I bet when you come back, come back to get me we'll be like, Wow, it was only yesterday you dropped me off. Of course, not even a full day. It will feel like hours, I'm sure. Your parents called it a cosmic microsecond or something. Something. Ah, well, probably a bit longer than a microsecond, though I'm unsure of the length of a cosmic one. Eight years, I guess. I suppose that would be the case. I try not to think about all the things that are going to make me cry. Like the thought of not waking up to Amicus for the first time in months. Or the fact that I won't have someone to really talk to at the end of the day. That I won't have someone who just, who's just genuinely kind and loving toward me like no one ever was before. I swallow the lump in my throat again. No. I'll have time to fall apart as soon as he leaves. I step forward and hug Amicus, burying my face in the warmth of his furry body, breathing in his scent. I'm determined I'm determined I'm determined to imprint this moment in my mind, something to help weather the weather what I'm sure will be a hard eight years. He rocks us back and forth for a moment, kissing my head like he always does. You're more than prepared for this. You're strong. Why else would you have been chosen? Thanks, and you'll continue to be an amazing emperor, Amicus. Here's hoping. Though I still don't know what to do next, right to do what to do right now, to be honest. Like, do I just walk out into the street next? Oh! Amicus steps back, filling around his cape and trousers. I really hope I remembered. Ah, here! Amicus pulls out a slim silver rod about a foot long. It's one of those holographic, ta holographic tablets that I see the Imperial family carrying around every now and then, aside from Amicus. <laughs> I've gotten the impression that he just isn't fond of electronics. The parents have instructed me to give you this. It will connect you to your link. It will connect to your lingua, which will transmit and display information that you might need. Otherwise, all communication will be through the lingua. I reach out, taking it. The cold metal light in my hands. You almost forgot to give it to me. Ah, yeah. Well, I did remember. I sigh, turning the rod over in my hands. You turn it on by tapping the top. I do as I'm told, and a blue glowing plane slides out from the rod, like a page attached to the spine of a book. It's blank for now. Just wait until they offer instructions. Okay? I tap the top of the rod again, and the hologram recedes. Another awkward moment of silence, then... Killian. I'm so happy to have met you, and I thank you. You have made me a better man, though this will be painful. Amicus's voice cracks. His resolve to remain strong finally gives in. I will think of you every day, and we will meet again in eight years. No matter what might happen between now and then, I will see you again. His voice is strained as he struggles to get his words out, and the tears really begin spilling over. Damn it! Amicus raises a paw to cover his face in frustration, like he actually planned on not crying before we parted ways. Second y'all, water time. And I find that silly, because of course we'd cry. I'm doing the same as I move forward and wrap him up in a tight, almost desperate hug. He crushes me into he crushes me to his body, laying out a loud, gasping sob through his teeth as I feel the wetness of his tears land on my head. I love you so much, Killian. I love you too. Like I've said, this is simply a stone in the way of our chariot's wheel. These few years are simply the push, and we'll be on our way again. And things will get easier over time. Without a doubt, and remember your ring. Though I might be moving away, I'm moving right I'm moving right towards you from the other side. We are permanently connected. Yeah. The universe is spherical. I don't care about the other theories. We both stand there, holding each other, trembling and sobbing. After a few minutes, though, we both calm down a little, and eventually I hear calm buzz faintly in Amicus's ear. Liftoff sequence should be engaged in one minute. Amicus steps back, firmly gripping my shoulders. He's smiling through the tears. And I think we shall see each other the other before then. The parents are mysterious, like I said. Definitely. Killian, my lover. My partner. My future husband. I love you. And you know I love you too. Amicus pulls me against his chest again. Hard. Squeezing me. You will have amazing success here. And I'll see you soon. Very soon. He plants a kiss on my mouth, and I have just enough time to kiss back before my wolf turns away and disappears out the balcony door. I listen to the metallic sounds of his footsteps hurrying up the fire escape. Then nothing until then nothing until there's a soft hum that I can only imagine is the ship before it's silent again. I stand there in the dark room, feeling a little stunned before moving to turn on the light. I 
I stand there, staring, unsure of how to feel. For the moment, it's mostly just an empty feeling, one that I'm sure will start to ache as I come to realize how lonely I actually am. For now, though, I move to the desk, waiting, thinking. Then I set the metal rod on top of the desk and tap the top. The blue plane appears again, and I stare at it. Ah, uh, how much is left? I don't have a lot of time. It's blank, and I start to wonder if I should keep it open. Maybe I should try to get some more sleep before facing what I'm sure will be a chaotic day. At that moment, though, I feel a twitch in my left eyelid. Then words appear on the blue plane. Proceed to the European Commission offices. A committee is expecting your arrival in one hour and twenty minutes. I stare at those words, realizing that I might not actually be alone amongst humanity, having all this knowledge. I look around, as if I have something to take with me. But no, I'm still in my robes. People will probably just think I'm a street performer or a crazy tourist. At three in the morning. My eyelid twitches again and a map appears on the screen, showing me a half-hour walk through the various alleys and back streets, meant to keep me out of sight, I imagine. So, with a deep breath, I pocket my alien gadget, preparing myself to begin this journey. I'm scared, but also relieved that things are moving so quickly. And also relieved that this will keep my mind off the separation I just experienced. With any luck, I'll, I'll be kept busy enough that I won't have to feel the full brunt of that agony all at once. I look back into the room where it all started, taking a deep breath. I'm actually kind of excited. The thing I've been dreading for months has now started, and that gives me a boost of adrenaline, preparing myself to face my duty. Then I turn off the light, leaving the apartment behind, ready to start another new life. Yes! Oh, it was great! I loved it! It was so amazing! Oh, this game was incredible. The end. Yep. Oh my god. Guys, we made it to the end of Ed Astra. And there's several, I think there's a couple of games that actually are like spinoff games. So we've got more Ed Astra content to cover. So, um, y'all in the comments, let me know which ones, you, which ones you, I should cover first. You know, kind of chronological order and all that. But yeah, y'all, this is the end of an Astra. Um, I did not cry. Oh. 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 I make my way quickly to the throne room, trying my best to contain my excitement. The most difficult part of this exciting new life I have is pretending that I'm not excited at all. So I try to look dignified as I walk into the throne room, toward Amicus seated at the back. I stop and bow as low as I possibly can. No need for that. What news do you have, Scipio? Unfortunately, I can't stop the smile from spreading across my face as I hold up the message. The Pharaoh has accepted our request. The diplomatic mission may commence as soon as you are ready, Emperor Amicus. Yes, that's that's the that's the sequel I heard about. Yes. All right, y'all. That's the end of it, Astra. We finally reached the end of our journey. Oh man, it's incredible. Um, I don't have a lot of time to articulate my thoughts on the matter. Um, so I might do a follow-up video discussing this, but. Uh, yeah, so anyway, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. This game is a 10 out of 10. Uh, don't forget to check out our Patreon. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.